You ready? You ready, sir? Sure. Okay, excellent. Today is Tuesday, August 7, 2007, and I am interviewing Colonel Edward Doran, who was born on July 2nd, 1918, in Phoenix, Arizona. This interview is being conducted at the Sunrise Senior Living Community in Fort Belvoir, Virginia. My name is Onika Koch, and I will be the interviewer. Good morning, Colonel Doran. How are you today? Oh, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> You're doing good, good. Could you please state for the record, sir, what war did you serve in? Well, it's been known to be World War II. World War II. And uh, that was enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what branch of service? What branch of service? <laughs> It was the US, United States Army. United States Army. And uh, with the Signal Corps. With the Signal Corps. Okay. And what was your highest rank in the Army? Huh. Full Colonel. Full Colonel. Excellent. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about life before you joined the United States Army. Jog your memory just a little bit. Um, were you drafted or did you enlist into the Army? I was first. Uh, earlier than that, 1937, I joined the Marine Corps Reserve, and I wanted to go to Annapolis, but they f uh, found, found out that I had uh, flat feet, as oh. they called it. Okay. Uh, Actually, the army called it moderately depressed archers, <laughs> but they didn't. They said flat feet, you can't, you can't stand watch. Oh. And the navy, that's it. So I said, okay, fine. Went out and enlisted in the United States Army, and uh, entered the uh, West Point Preparatory School at Fort Winfield Scott. Virginia, no. and uh, th then started my career. Then started your career. Wow. Well, could you tell us a little bit more about about West Point and, and the start of your career? Oh, sure. Okay. I can talk about that for all <laughs> all day. Um, West Point is hard to get into. You have to have first of all qualifications that uh, t for entrance and uh, one of them is uh, either you have your parents one parent can uh, uh, attest to you and he has to be uh, either a uh, well a a serviceman, mm -hmm. the parents, yes, and they have a very, very difficult situation in differentiating wh who can uh, enter the point. One of them is uh, congr congressmen are allotted a certain number of of spaces to have West Point. Uh, uh, cadets. The uh, the only for what and they they still have to uh, take a, a written examination or produce uh, documents from the colleges. Mm -hmm to uh, show that they have attained a certain degree of learning. Right, so it's a very, it's a very um, uh, competitive process, right? Yes. It's, yes. It's, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in my case, I had uh, the difficulty in establishing a residence. Well, in the Army, 
being a member of the army, I can also add a certain degree of freedom in, in uh, announcing where my uh, domicile was. Mm -hmm. And uh, fortunately, I had a, an aunt and an uncle living in an area in which there was a, a congressional vacancy for West Point uh, applicant, and uh, I uh, was, uh, I just w took, w took uh, that uh, opportunity to uh, change my address because I felt that seeing that I enlisted in the Army myself, even though my mother had to <laughs> to agree to it. Right. Because I was only about 19 you at were that 19. time. And where were you living at that time when you were 19 years old? And so uh, I took the examination, won an appointment. Okay. And uh, became a member of that <laughs> congressional district. Was a very nice person it was the, and we kept up a uh, a good rapport. Uh, well, we kept up a a, a, con a communications uh, oh for uh, about uh, about two four years, and then he lost his seat. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! And he, he, I don't think he was too bad, badly hurt by losing. Okay, and this so, was in California. What yes, state was it was this? in California. Okay, okay. It was in the. I can't remember the district number now. That's so long ago. Yeah. But so he, what, was, what, what? he was an awfully nice person, and I, and he was very happy with his choice of having me there because I didn't give him any trouble. I Excellent. guess. Very good. So what? So then, from there, you entered into the West Point Academy in New York. Yeah. And what class? What graduating class were you? That was nineteen forty-three. Nineteen forty-three, and that was a special year for your class, right? From what I understand, that was a special year for your class, nineteen forty-three. Yes. Why was it so special? About what was so special about your class? My class? Well, I think it was the best of them all. Yes. And everybody else but in our class did anyway. Right. I think they all are, are about about the same production. But the I, I the Academy has some very, very rigorous uh, requirements that have to be followed by no matter who comes in there. And uh, by and large, the products are pretty similar as they come out. And it's a, they, I think they are very, very uh, fortunate in uh, having such a good uh, turnout as they do. Yes, but there was something there was something unique about your class, a distinction about the class of 1943. Oh yes. What was the distinction? Well, first of all, I'm in it. <laughs> 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 All, all of us did pretty well during World War II, mm -hmm. and uh, because we had the opportunity for one to show our good, I'm sure there were other classes in which uh, people say, "Well, this is kind of a nondescript uh, situation there," because they didn't have any any uh, any way to show it. Okay. And and, uh, and how long did it take you to complete the academy? How long did it take you to complete? Oh, f four years. Four years. Yeah, but it's a standard. Uh, standard. Four okay. years. Okay. We I went. At, we graduated just a little early, a couple of months, because of the war. Okay. They wanted to get us out of there so they can shovel in some more new cadets. Okay. Okay. Very but good. It's a good. Okay. What, can you tell us what happened after you graduated from West Point? Where yeah. did you go? Uh, I didn't have, we didn't have very, very much say in the matter. <laughs> we graduated from West Point. I think we had about 
14 days leave, in which I took that opportunity to get married to my my wife, and uh, that uh, just the end of it. The, the, end, the leave ended, and I had to go to a, a special course a special for course. the branch that I was to serve in. And I was I had taken the Signal Corps because I liked the, the idea of uh, communications. Okay, so you were trained in communications? Yes. Okay. And uh, that's... I went from there to the 83rd Infantry Division right out. Right out. And they didn't give it too, too much. Uh, I think we had about uh, th two months. Just the, the very, very, very uh, skimpy. I th think that it would be a it was a one-year course compressed into about two months. Oh, wow. And uh, you, and they loaded you down with books, too, <laughs> and said, now take these and read them. That, was pretty, <laughs> that, that sounds pretty intense. After we left. Yeah. We, we were, and they were very good books, too. Okay. But uh, it was, again, the pressure of providing uh, the necessary people for the necessary jobs to be undertaken. And where did this training take place? Uh, well, Fort uh, Monmouth, New Jersey for the Signal Corps. Okay. And uh, I think I was up there about one month. Okay. During that. Now that was usually a one-year course. So we got really just familiar with the, the language. Of, of the, and we had to then for that time nose around and find out how and how, and and going into the division okay. that I, we were assigned to. I went to the 83rd Infantry Division, which was newly formed. And what was the purpose of the 83rd? <laughs> This is infantry. Okay. That's combat battle? Uh, that's all, yeah, combat. Okay. They, they weren't uh, going to give us any pleasure assignments at that time. They were all tough. They were all tough, yes. And pretty specific missions that you were, that you would eventually be assigned to later on, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, could you talk to us a little bit about um, your basic training for the 83rd? Mm hmm Okay. Well, we had had that. You already had we that. Because we were in West Point. We, we, were t we had a... Throughout the four years, you yeah, went through all Yeah, in the four years. Training. Okay. Tactics. Tactics. Do you remember what your first days were like, you know, on campus at Pardon West me? Point? What were your first days like on campus at West Point? Do you remember your first days? By the first day, yes, I got hell. You got hell. Yeah, it was hard. The the upperclassmen took over the plebes. I was a plebe. Oh, you were a plebe. That's what they call the freshmen. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you caught you got holy Toledo <laughs> all the time. You, you and that's pretty much the same. They did did the same thing at Annapolis. The Air Force Academy does that too. They, what they do is they knock you down and squeeze out everything, and and then rebuild you oh. and uh, <laughs> re restore your your pride and everything else. But the first day is very very difficult. Mm -hmm. I had been in the army though. So you already had an pre pre man too, right. and. I knew what was coming up, so it wasn't as as uh, shocking as as a usual cadet would find out. Right. So you you already had a prior experience. 
you had prior experience. Oh, yes. Yeah. So that was to your benefit. Well, I had my reserve service mm -hmm. as a Marine, mm -hmm. and then I went into the 6th uh, Coast Artillery of uh, the Army. Wow. And uh, so I had a lot of time. I had uh, two years. It took me two years at the West Point Preparatory School to mm -hmm. land an appointment and pass the entrance exam. Mm -hmm and uh, pass all the other tests and uh, I had that plus the reserve time I had and before that I was in the junior ROTC at high school for three years. Oh wow. I started at the uh, uh, let's see what the school was at well, it it was my school in San Francisco. San Francisco, California. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you already had a lot of experience before arriving at West Point. I, I thought I did anyway, but they were very very quick to tell me I didn't know anything. <laughs> I was a, I was next to being an idiot. Oh wow! And you just listen now. And we'll show you the right way to do it. Okay. Well, they they did. The right way was their way. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems like you learned a tremendous amount while you were there. What what skills did you learn at West Point? What, what skills? What skills did you learn at West Point? Um, well, how, how to read and interpret instructions, one thing and how to respond and uh, other than that it's just plain academic mm -hmm. because uh, you had to measure up to all the, all the requirements mm -hmm. to that they would have in a college in fact i think they were even more stringent much more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we had some college people transfer in to West Point, and some of those didn't last very long at all. Really? Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. It sounds like you have a lot of stories and, and experiences and memories. What's your most memorable um, experience as a cadet at West Point? <laughs> uh, passing the first the first year because I wasn't quite sure whether I was going to make it myself and none of us were <laughs> and uh, the war was on too so uh, after that it was kind of duck soup but duck soup. Okay. <laughs> so passing your first year was your most memorable experience passing your first year, getting through your I first year? I think it was, yeah, and it was the most significant because if you got through the first year, the chances are not many people were found deficient after the first year. Okay. The, the first combing out is around Christmas time of the first semester. Okay. And uh, that's when return from Christmas is when the exams took over and uh, you were in bad shape while you were out, out in the cold. Okay. So we made, it, we made it through the first year. Yeah. Uh -huh. Excellent. And, that, that's, and it's a mode of life too. It's very, very different. It was very different from just in the, as an enlisted man in the Army. Mm -hmm. You had some freedom there. At West Point, you didn't have anything. You were nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's a very, it's a very unique place. It's a very unique place. Very unique. It is extremely so. Yes, yes. Unique um, is just the word for it. <laughs> you can't be more unique. Right. You either are or you're not. Exactly. Exactly. 
Um, we're going to talk to you about your experiences and, and your life. Um, where did you go after you completed um, basic training, after you graduated from West Point? Where did you venture to after that, after joining the 83rd? <laughs> I went right into the 83rd Infantry Division. Okay, and where were you physically located? They, well, they gave us about two weeks uh, leave. Right. And because it was wartime. Mm -hmm. And that time, I married my lovely wife, and uh, we then packed up our grips and our suitcases and went to my first post, and that was the 83rd Infantry Division, which had just been formed about, oh, about four months before. Okay, and that was located in Indiana? Yeah, Indiana. And what, what was the name of the, uh, of the facility? I was trying to think of. Is it Camp Atterbury? No. It, I can't, I don't remember. That's a long time ago. Okay. Not that a problem. was still 1943. Okay. Okay. And what were your first thoughts when you arrived in Indiana? Mm -hmm. What were your first thoughts when you and your new wife arrived in Indiana? What were your first impressions? Uh, they were nice people. Nice people? Yeah. The people in Indiana are, are very, very pleasant. Okay. The people that I knew. Okay. Uh, uh, that I found, and uh, that just, other than that, they were just nice people. What about on on base? Hmm? What about on base on, mm -hmm. too. Okay. They were, and they all the officers were pretty decent. Uh, what did you do when you first got there? <laughs> I I followed the advice: keep your mouth shut and the aliumentary canal open, <laughs> but your mouth will shut and uh, just listen. And that's what I did. And uh, then I turned, they used as, uh, oh, guides. Some people came, came in there with know-it-alls mm -hmm. and uh, had to express their opinions on everything, and they didn't do too well. In fact, they got out, they were transferred <laughs> before you know, because infantry divisions have to be almost like a family. Okay. You have to like everybody or respect everybody, because they, anybody is, can be your key to surviving. Okay. And we, we got along pretty good. So uh, there was a great deal of cohesion? It, extremely so. Okay. And uh, by the time we went into combat, we were uh, just like brothers, almost. Oh, we have our, our differences of opinion. And uh, it's... It was kind of sad when when we had to, uh, you know, go out for taps for one of our people. Right, right. It's, but it's that was the way it is in every every organization. Sure, sure. Can you tell us um, a little bit more about Indiana uh, on base at the camp, at the oh, campsite? A very nice. How was the food? Those and the were nice people in Indiana. Yeah. And they were uh, friendly. Right. And we made some very nice friends, friends. there, my wife and I. Uh, we, they took us in uh, just like they would, uh, you know, long, s r young... Uh, couple. Yeah, couples coming in. Did you live on base as a couple? Oh, no. On, you lived off base? Oh, oh yes. Oh, okay. And they were, we were Camp, Camp Atterbury was our, okay. our first one. Okay. And that one uh, was about 18 miles from the place that we found to live in. Oh, wow. See, there, the people out there, they, uh, 
and have long distances between places. And uh, and we didn't have a car. You didn't have a car? No. How did you get around? <laughs> well, somebody else had a car. And and we kind of moose rides all the time. <laughs> well, we had to, mm -hmm. because we had to uh, uh, get get back and forth. Okay. Uh, so you, so you uh, they didn't see you. It's it's hard to visualize mm -hmm. what the situation was. You couldn't buy a car. It, no matter how much money you had, unless you did a black market deal, and then put it all out of, out of your your uh, ability anyway, when it comes up. Oh, okay. And it was a it was a bad time, and it was. Uh, it was a bad time economically for the country. Everybody. For everyone. And our service pay wasn't too good, mm -hmm. especially as second lieutenant was about, at that time, about $110, $120 a month. And so we, we were, but th things changed in time. Yes. Can you tell us about your downtime? Did you have any downtime while you were there? Downtime, any free time, uh, when you weren't training, oh, yeah, when say, you weren't sure. And what what kind of things did you did you do? Well, when you went to town, well, I didn't do anything. We I stayed home with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Just because uh, you were newlyweds. Yeah, we were newlyweds, mm -hmm. so we I didn't have to go to town. We were getting acquainted, oh. even though we'd been going together for a long time. Mm -hmm. she, she and I had been uh, uh, well, we were at one time we were ba uh, infants together. Oh, you've known each other all your lives pretty yeah, much. Yeah, before okay. that. See, it's as a because I was from my mother's hometown. Mm -hmm. And uh, she brought my, brought me up to her home in Wisconsin. Okay. From all the way from uh, it was uh, Phoenix, Arizona, where oh. I was born. Okay. Because it was hot down there. Yes. Oh gosh, it was hot. Uh -huh. See, my mom had been a teacher in in Arizona. Oh, okay. And uh, music teacher. Oh wow! So she decided that it'd be good for me to go up there. And anyway, my dad was working, and uh, ha out of uh, out of the state sometimes. So he said, "Go on home and take your baby with you." And so we we got along pretty well. Uh, so that's a. And then uh, the only problem is I met. The, my wife's father was indirectly, re, well, was uh, about three steps away from, he was actually uh, part of the family from my, my wife's, uh, from uh, my mother's side. Okay. So it was kind of complicated. This is a small town small too. So it was very close knit. So everyone knew everyone. Oh yeah, we yeah. we were very happy. That's wonderful. So, so did so did did the war have an impact on your relationships with family and friends at all? Did it have any impact on? Well, it does in a way. Uh, it it's inescapable. Uh, one thing you appreciate your family more mm -hmm. than uh, you would if everything would just been normal. Mm -hmm. because, but it, everything worked out just beautifully for for my wife and I, and my wife and I were very 
all we were related some way. I think about tenth grade, tenth uh, level uh, cousins, way way back. But they they were because they're from the old country. Okay. Yes. They came from from Wisconsin. Okay. And t came to Wisconsin from Sweden, and uh, so, and there was a little Norwegian mixed up in there somewhere. Okay. My mother was part Norwegian. Okay. And but somewhere down the line they were uh, related. Okay. And uh, it got very complicated. <laughs> to, too too much so to remember. Because it didn't matter too much anyway. We all liked everybody. Right. Well, that's good. It sounds like it all worked out very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We had no complaints at all. Excellent. Excellent. And well, I married you... the guy, girl that, that I met. Uh, I was just, see, I had graduated. Mm-hmm. This is from high no, school. No, I hadn't. I was. I was still. A, a, I was. A, I went uh, on a Christmas leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Christmas leave, and I met this pretty girl, a very pretty girl, and uh, she was in some sort of a pageant mm -hmm. for Christmas time, and she w she had a job was working there. Oh, she was working with the Chamber of Commerce. She was the, the showplace for the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, she was wow. very pretty. Wow. And so in addition to whacking out letters on a typewriter, well, she had to greet people coming in and so on. So, hey, it was just small time and small town uh, operation. And uh, everybody seemed to be very much in uh, line with being friendly. Mm -hmm. Everybody was friendly there. And they all knew each other. They'd been here for I don't know how long. Mm -hmm. But the, the immigrants that time uh, were very, very close together. And uh, it, was, it was a nice time for, for this country to, to get together. And they still have these tendencies out in the uh, the countryside now. You go out in the, in the country and see in the smaller towns, there's a very tightness of feeling with the people who choose. See, it's not like the big cities. It's the big cities. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot more people, right? So it's yeah, harder it to is, and they're they're more occupied right, with, the with day -day. themselves and their own problems. Well, it sounds like it, it's it paid off to be good good to good people, right? Oh, the yeah. wonderful people. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, could you tell us um, a little bit more about your experience with the 83rd um, Infantry Division? Did you see combat during oh, the war? Oh, and if so, can you tell us a little bit more about that? We were moved into combat. Okay, tell us a little bit more about that. Well, we we went into we had five camp uh, five uh, campaigns. That's all they had in Europe. Okay, what does that mean? A campaign? Well, it's a, a battle. I mean, not a battle. It's a it's an assignment would okay. be over a period of time. Okay. And for an announced purpose ahead of time. The campaign is to seize a certain city or or put uh, people to uh, to work at wherever they were. Okay. And uh, it we went. Uh, we went through the. the we only had five campaigns in uh, Europe, anyway. Okay. We were in all of them. You were in all five campaigns. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you tell us about some of the, the combat that you saw? A lot of it, an awful lot. But I, 
I don't want to go into that. Okay, that's fine. That's okay. Did you sustain any injuries um, in combat at all? What? Did you sustain any injuries during combat? Were you ever injured? Were you ever injured? Hurt? Uh, no, not, not, not to the point where you, you get bruised a lot. Mm -hmm. But I, I didn't uh, pick up any shells in, in my body. Uh, we were near, and two, I didn't get nose to nose with, with that combat. Mm -hmm. But we were pretty close to it all the time. You try to avoid those things. Yeah, you were very. You work around the guy. Okay. It's all right to shoot him, but. Uh, that's that's another thing. So you were pretty fortunate. I was very fortunate. Okay. I I had enough trouble anyway, just getting by with uh, with living the life out in the field. Mm -hmm. It was hard. Uh, what, The best thing I I can remember is those when the war was over. <laughs> really? You we went home. <laughs> you want you want to tell us about about when the war was over and what happened? What, mm -hmm. what you want to tell us a little bit more about that? What happened when you came back home to the United States? Oh, I just started. The first thing I did was uh, start over again with another unit and. Uh, what unit did you join? Uh, that was in the, the 83rd had been demobilized okay. and put back in the reserves. It was uh, Was there a reason for that, why they were yeah, demobilized? Yeah, because the war was over. Okay. We didn't get home in, until after the war was over. Oh. And then all the draftees had to go home first to get Tied, untied from the from the army, and uh, we who were life lifers, they called us. Mm -hmm. Well, we were late getting out, but we we were still in the service, so we had uh, uh, peacetime assignments and or occupation work. And where did you do your peacetime assignments? Where did you do your peaceside assignments at? Where were you located? Well, I, I stayed in Europe. I came, came back to Europe. Mm -hmm. What countries? And uh, I was with the Third Army. Mm -hmm. That was General Patton's outfit. Oh, OK. And where were you located? Where, where in Europe? Well, it was in uh, Germany. You were in Germany. And, and uh, it's all, well, all over. We were occupying Germany then and uh, part of northern Italy. And it's, but that, again, that is a very long time it's ago. It's a very long time ago. A lot of stuff to recall, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well tell us about when you came back, finally came back to the United States. What was that like when you, when you finally landed on U.S. soil? What was that like? Do you remember that day? I got, uh, well, it was nice to be home. <laughs> That's one thing. And I, it was time to go out and see our relatives and uh, let them see how we managed to get through the war. Mm -hmm. where did, where, when you came back to the States, where did you land? When you came back to the United States, where did you land? Where did you come into? <laughs> New York. New York. We left from New York. We came back to New York. Okay. And then uh, we would, uh, I, I never did get back to, st I never did get stationed in California. Really? That's where where I like to. 
it was a, New York was pretty nice, but I didn't like metropolitan New York. Eh? Mm -hmm. That's for the birds. Oh, that's for the birds. <laughs> um, how did life change? You okay? What? You want to? You okay? Need to stretch? Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. I have to unwind here because nope. I get. I'm getting get old. <laughs> I've gotten old. Okay. How did life change in the United States after the war? Did life change? Did you notice a difference in Just American some, society? Just some more of the same, except it was more of it and a little faster and much more expensive. Much more expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it, it was nice to be home, though. It was nice to be home? I, yeah. Well, we, uh, I was happy and, and very, the stations that I had in Europe were very, in the very civilized places. Okay. They were, uh, and the people were, and I, I got to like the people, the inhabitants. If you learn, first of all, the, if you can learn their language. And uh, once you learn your language, uh, you can understand them and then uh, enjoy uh, your conversations with them. Mm -hmm. And they're a company. Absolutely. I, I don't think that we, I, I, there were individuals that you, you, you would dislike, but you'd dislike them anyway. They're, on the whole, I found the Europeans were nice people. Very good, very good. And I made two more trips back after that. So you were a, you were a military career, correct? Did you stay in the military your entire career? Yeah, I spent my whole, uh, I, my entire career has been either overseas or in Washington, D.C. Oh, wow. I don't know why I, I just I just ended up in the. It had to do with my. With your training. My mother. Uh, branch that was uh, the Signal Corps. Okay. Because it, uh, the Signal Corps is uh, all concentrated in one little tiny. That's uh, a very small uh, outfit. Okay. And. Uh, they do a lot of work, and they have people in many areas there. Okay. So, uh, mine happened to be around D.C., and it just, it was, well, that's the way it was. Okay. I, I never did get back to California. <laughs> maybe, Except maybe. Tw two, two, two uh, visits. Oh, okay. Well, maybe you'll get back there sometime soon. Maybe you'll get maybe you'll get back there one day soon. Oh, so maybe. Heck, everybody at the, <laughs> that I would like to see, they've either died or they moved out. <laughs> wow. So, uh, it isn't the same. It's not I the went same. back re uh, recently too, and uh, well, uh, not recently, <laughs> about 15 years ago now. But, uh, it wasn't quite the same. Yeah. It, it, it's different. And I wasn't there during the transition. If you're there all the time, then it's all right. But. Okay. Well, Colonel Doran, I do have one last question for you today, sir. Mm -hmm. um, many vets choose not to talk about their military experience for a number of different reasons, but today you did. Um, why do you think it's important for veterans to tell their stories? I what? don't know. You don't know. <laughs> I've just, I've just been blurting out <laughs> answers to questions. Uh, uh, I don't have any particular grievances. I don't have any uh, particular preferences either. The, uh, but uh, if it helps anybody, it's fine. 
okay, well, years from now when a, a, a young man or a young lady, years from now when a, a little girl or a little boy makes the trip to Washington, D.C., to the Library of Congress, and they look up your interview today, how do you want to be remembered? I don't know, just <laughs> say, say, uh, person number X. It's, I'm, I'm just another uh, yokel, and possibly I make a, no pretense to being any better than anybody else. I try to do my best, but, uh, and I think I've succeeded to a large extent, but I also think that I could do a lot of things much better if I were to do them again. So that's learning. And aside from that, I don't have any, any comment at all. Okay. Well, thank you very much, sir. Thank you for learning, and thank you for sharing your story with us today. All right. Well.